As we can see in this figure, sympatholytic drugs produce the antihypertensive effect by acting at different levels. They can act in the central nervous system that is in the brain and inhibit the central sympathetic discharge and the drugs are clonidine and methyl dopa. The second site of action is at the ganglion where the transmission of impulses across the synapse occurs. An example of ganglion blocker is trimethophan. The third site of action is at the adrenergic neurons where these drugs help in depleting the catecholamines from the adrenergic neurons and by decreasing the release of catecholamines from the neurons, they decrease the blood pressure. Example of this drug is Reserpin. Lastly, the action can be at the adrenergic receptors where these drugs inhibit the action of epinephrine and norepinephrine on the receptors and thus decrease the blood pressure. And examples of these drugs are alpha blockers and beta blockers. So starting off with central sympatholytic drugs, for example, clonidine. The primary action of clonidine is in the brain or in the central nervous system. It acts as an agonist on alpha-2 receptors that are present in the brainstem and vasomotor center, decreasing the central sympathetic discharge, decreasing the release of epinephrine and norepinephrine. Decreasing the release of epinephrine and norepinephrine, there is a reduction in heart rate, there is a reduction in contractility of the heart, the cardiac output decreases, the peripheral vascular resistance decreases and this helps in lowering blood pressure. Secondly, clonidine acts as an agonist on imidazoline receptor that is I1 receptor which is known to modulate alpha 2 receptor activity. So by modulating alpha 2 receptor activity through imidazoline receptor that is I1 receptor, there is a decrease in central sympathetic discharge thereby decreasing the blood pressure. Thirdly, clonidine acts as an agonist on alpha 2 receptors that are expressed in the presynaptic nerve endings and by stimulating the alpha 2 receptors, it inhibits the release of epinephrine and norepinephrine into the synaptic cleft and this decreases the blood pressure and helps in regulating blood pressure. In this way, clonidine acts as an antihypertensive agent by acting as an alpha 2 receptor agonist. Clonidine can be useful in the management of mild to moderate hypertension but an important drawback of clonidine is that it can cause rebound hypertension. So if one or two doses of clonidine are missed, there is an alarming rise in blood pressure even higher than the pre-treatment values and this can be life-threatening. So what is the underlying reason for the withdrawal hypertension that is associated with clonidine? As we can see in this figure, in presence of clonidine, there is inhibition of central sympathetic discharge, there is inhibition of release of epinephrine and norepinephrine. So when clonidine is suddenly withdrawn, there is large release of epinephrine and norepinephrine into the circulation and this causes rise in blood pressure. Also because of sympathetic blockage caused by clonidine, there is upregulation of supersensitivity of adrenergic receptors. So more number of adrenergic receptors are available in the nerve endings and these receptors respond to even small doses of catecholamines and cause an exaggerated response. A sharp rise in blood pressure is caused by small release of catecholamines. So thus sudden withdrawal of clonidine causes rebound hypertension because of large release of epinephrine and norepinephrine into the circulation an increase in the number of receptors that respond to epinephrine and norepinephrine action. The other adverse effects of clonidine due to central action are sedation, dizziness, nightmares. Also, there is dryness of mouth, nose, 
because of anti secretory action caused by central effect so thus all the chloridin helps in lowering the blood pressure its use as an anti hypertensive agent has declined over a period of years this is because of increased incidence of adverse effect rebound hypertension that is caused by chloridin and the availability of other anti hypertensive agents that are better tolerated However, chloridin has other therapeutic benefits. It is useful in the treatment of opioid addiction. Opioid withdrawal is associated with overactivity of sympathetic system and large release of epinephrine and norepinephrine, and this causes symptoms of tachycardia, tachypnea, rise in blood pressure, restlessness, anxiety. So, chloridin, by decreasing the central sympathetic discharge, helps in controlling the symptoms of opioid withdrawal and helps in reducing craving for the drug chloridin can also be used to control loose motions because of diabetic neuropathy alpha 2 receptors are expressed in the gi mucosa and stimulation of alpha 2 receptors enhances absorption of salt and water and this helps in controlling diarrhea so chloridin through alpha 2 receptor mediated stimulatory action helps to control diarrhea in diabetic neuropathy next chloridin also produces analgesic effect so it can be used along with general anesthetics to reduce the dose of general anesthetics prior to surgery or preoperatively the analgesic effect is due to alpha 2 receptor agonist action on the peripheral nerve endings and this reduces the release of pain producing substances such as glutamate and substance P into the synaptic cleft and helps in reducing pain. So, clonidin through alpha 2 agonist action reduces the release of pain producing substances and produces analgesia. Some of the new containers of clonidin are moxonidin and rilmenidin. So, these drugs have selective action on I1 receptor known to modulate alpha 2 receptor activity and also they have a long plasma half life. Because of selective action on I1 receptor and the long plasma half-life, the incidence of rebound hypertension is less and the safety profile of these drugs is better than that of clonidin. The next drug that acts as a central sympatholytic is alpha-methyl dopa. The mechanism of action of alpha-methyl dopa is similar to that of clonidin except that alpha-methyl dopa does not act directly on alpha-2 receptors in the brain. So, alpha-methyl dopa gets converted to norepinephrine which in turn acts as an agonist on alpha-2 receptors in the brain decreasing the central sympathetic discharge, decreasing the epinephrine and norepinephrine release and the heart rate, the cardiac output decreases, the peripheral vascular resistance decreases and this helps in lowering the blood pressure. So, alpha-methyl dopa is a pro-drug gets converted to alpha-methyl norepinephrine which in turn acts on alpha-2 receptor and decreases the blood pressure. Because of decreased sympathetic discharge, there is a decrease in the plasma renin levels, but the renal blood flow is well maintained. So there is no compromise in the renal blood flow and glomerular filtration rate. Therefore, alpha-methyl dopa can be used in treating hypertension complicated with renal insufficiency. Alpha-methyl dopa is also considered as the drug of choice for treating hypertension during pregnancy because it is not only effective but it is safe for the mother and the fetus. Alpha-methyl dopa can produce side effects similar to that of clonidin. It can produce central side effects such as sedation, restlessness, headache and also anti-secretory effect causing dryness of mouth, nasal stuffiness and so on. Both alpha-methyl dopa and clonidin can cause fluid retention and weight gain. Therefore, it is preferably administered along with a diuretic agent that minimizes the fluid retention. The next drug is a ganglion blocker, for example, trimethophan. Trimethophan inhibits both sympathetic and parasympathetic ganglion. It has a rapid onset of action and a short duration of action. So, it can be given intravenously and it produces controlled hypotension during a surgical procedure. Next, we move on to the depleters of catecholamine from the peripheral nerve ending and the drug is Visarpin. 
So let's see how the serpent acts. Monoamines such as norepinephrine, epinephrine and dopamine are synthesized and stored in the synaptic recycles which in turn are released into the synaptic cleft and acts on the receptors present in the postsynaptic membrane and causes excitation of the postsynaptic cell. Termination of action of these neurotransmitters is produced by uptake of these neurotransmitters into the presynaptic nerve endings which in turn is stored in the synaptic vesicles with the help of a transporter and this transporter is known as the vesicular monoamine transporter 2. Now, resulting acts by inhibiting or blocking the monoamine transporter and this inhibits the transport of neurotransmitters into the vesicles thus inhibiting the storage of vesicles and the unprotected monoamines are metabolized by enzymes such as Mao enzymes, UMT enzymes. So these enzymes are present in the cytoplasm and they cause degradation of these neurotransmitters. So this causes depletion of neurotransmitters from the nerve endings. The neurotransmitters are removed from the nerve endings and this decreases the size of the neurotransmitter pool, decreases the release of epinephrine and norepinephrine into the synaptic cleft. So result pain by causing depletion of catecholamines, means, cause removal of catecholamines, means, decreases the release of these neurotransmitters and decrease the actions thereby help in reducing the blood pressure. However, the serpent produces several side effects such as sedation, nightmares, restlessness. It can also cause gastric intolerance because of increased cholinergic activity in the gastric mucosa causing gastric ulceration, diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, stomach cramps and therefore Reserpine is not very well tolerated. Reserpine was a popular drug in late 1950s and early 1960s but nowadays it is only of historical importance because there are other better antihypertensive agents with better safety profile. Therefore, Reserpine has limited use. So in this session we have discussed the mechanism of action, uses, adverse effects of central sympatholytic agents that is clonidine, methyl dopa, ganglion blocker that is trimethaphan and reserpin. Thank you so much for watching.